Well, Shoot Fire with Ashley is back underway. And today, as I promised, we are looking right at a scope replacement. This was just absolutely too easy. I'm going to have to go around to the other side so you can see how this scope is attached. So I try to do it without falling off the deck here. This scope has two large nuts on the side of it. See those nuts? Those are half inch American good old SAE nuts. And that setup is very solid. The cool thing was I pulled this off my sniper rifle. This is the SWFA. You can see it right there. Super sniper scope. And it's basically about $900 worth of glass for 300 bucks. You're getting for $300 something that will shoot with the 900 to a thousand dollar big boys it is a very well built scope it's got good glass there's some specs on it right there for you to see see if that'll focus in there we go swipa swfa super sniper 12 is the power it's a fixed power scope and 42 millimeters is the lens now, I want to show you a few things about this. Let's look at some features. It is heavy built. It has right here on the back end, you see the plus and minus. That is strictly the focus that you use to focus your crosshairs, to get them very precise. I will have a picture uh, of these crosshairs. They're very special. Uh, they're, they're a mill, they're not mill dot, they're mill quad, and you'll see what that means. They have a pattern, instead of having a dot, they have a diamond, a uh, elongated diamond up on its end, all very precise. It's not a wire, it's laser etched. I think they use some nice Japanese glass on these. Very good glass, of course, it's fog free, nitrogen filled, and all that jazz brass. Also, the next feature that it has, which I love, is it has a adjustable objective. So here in the yard, when I'm shooting up something real close, like you see that little target over there, just uh, 20 yards out, I can set it on 20, and I can shoot playing cards with it. So there's the 20. Let's look at these increments as I go up. This is nice information to know. There's a 30. So you do 25 yards, which is your standard pistol range. You go on up. Now you're out deer hunting in the brush. There's 50. You can do 100 yards. And I've shot playing cards at 100 with it. You can still see the king, the jack, and the queen's face clearly. Just a little farther out. Now you stepped out 200 yards steel. And uh, at the range, you can go on out to 500 yards. And if you're out on the range out at 1,000 yards, you go right off into infinity. And it, the focus is very clear. This is adjustable objective. What does that mean? The object that you're going to shoot at, that's what you want to be objective about. You want to be able to focus your object. It's uh, other knobs here, the turret knobs. The top one you see there is, uh, is your up and down. And I love that knob right there. That is set up in mill radians so it's in tenths of a mil 0.1 millirad millirad radian and this is all angular stuff it's kind of like minute of angle but this is more militaristic so the graph on the inside your crosshairs have those little marks they are in mil and your adjustments in mil i could not stand the confusion of having mil dots on the inside and then adjustments on the outside in MOA. That would be like trying to pour ounces in a measuring cup and you look at it and it's in cc's or milliliters or something. So I just like it mill, mill, mill dots on the inside, mill adjustments on the outside. Keep everything the same. And this is very easy to use. Uh, I'm gonna click this a few times and try not to lose my adjustment, but you can hear this, listen carefully. It has, can you hear that? I hope you can. I probably messed up my adjustment. Uh, anyway, that's your, uh, your. Uh, let's see, what is that one labeled? It's labeled right here on the top. You can see that. See, it's labeled right there up. 
So up, you rotate counterclockwise, and it goes up. It's very small increments. But uh, you make one whole loop around, all the way around, and that's one mil. So you can see the increments are very small. And then this one uh, on this side is your right and left. You can clearly see that. Bullet impact. You're moving your point of bullet impact on the target. And uh, it's just really, really nice. And then it's got a large gradient on the front of it and on the side where you can keep up with exactly how far you've moved in case somebody grabs your scope up. Now these don't have any scope covers. So once you get your scope set, it's very nice. You get it precisely set where you're hitting the bullets hitting dead center in the bullseye at 100 yards or whatever distance you pick. And then right after you do that, you break these little brass set screws loose. I'm gonna see if I can detail them. It's got, uh, I think three of these per knob. Right there, you can see it. It's kind of hard out here in the sunshine. But uh, Rooster says, look right there. Anyway, you take a very small Allen wrench and you break that loose. It's got an O-ring inside that cap. You lift it up very gently and you dial it around until your zero lines up on the back side at six o'clock, right over that grid marker. And then you slowly slide it down. It's a, you'll feel a spline, it's a splined hub in there. You get it down on there good and solid and then you re-tighten all three of your brass locking set screws. I always tighten them down, then I back them off a quarter turn and then I tighten them down again, kind of pump the screw in there. It's brass on brass, it won't hurt anything. It's designed to do this. And when you get through, your zero will be correct there and your zero will be correct here. That way if somebody bumps it or Almost forgot to mention on this wonderful rifle now with this new sniper, sniper scope on there, how to sight one of these in without wasting a whole bunch of expensive ammo. This is by far the simplest way if you don't own a laser and you don't want to shoot all day long at a target. I've watched guys go to the shooting range and get all excited about deer hunting season and burn two boxes of ammo. And I'd, I'd trip, pull them aside and say, hey, listen, there's an easier way. So here's the easier way to do this. If you don't know this, it's a very good trick. You can see I've got the action of this gun broken open. Got a little bit of black there. It looks like somebody been shooting that thing with some unique powder. So there's the barrel. Now you're not gonna be able to see this picture exact, but you'll get the idea. Over there, we've got a standard black bullseye. You can also use a paper plate and you get a good distance, about 25 yards is a very good place to start. And uh, all you got to do is just line up your barrel. And you can see I kind of hillbilly this. A little bit of rigging here. You got a little bunny bag there, a sandbag. Got a little stainless steel plate. I've got this riding where it's just touching the lifetime table. You got to have a lifetime table for this. And then all you do is you just wiggle it around. You probably won't be able to see this in the camera. And you get that. Stand back at a distance. You get it to where that bullseye is dead center in the bore of that rifle. You're using your rifle now, the bore of your rifle, you're using it as a sighting scope. You're looking down that barrel and you wiggle it around until you get that bullseye dead center in that barrel. Then without touching the rifle, you look through your crosshairs and see where they're at. Now, you do not need to look to see if you go right and left because it's going to be exactly backwards from what you're thinking anyway. Just grab a scope knob, start turning it, and make them crosshairs be dead center on that bullseye. Then go back down again and check it. Make sure you didn't wiggle the rifle. You'll have to do that back and forth. Check your bore. The more solid your rest, of course, the better things will be. Make sure your gun is level. See, I wasn't quite level, so... Now it's level, I back it up, check that, check and check. Check on aisle one, two, three, clean up on aisle four. And you get that bore dead center. Bullseye's dead center in the middle of that barrel. Go back and check your crosshairs. I did that yesterday about three or four times. And on the very first shot I shot, I was in the black. Very first shot. Then after that, I didn't calculate to see how many mils were what. I gave it about five little one-tenth clicks in the direction I wanted to go. I took an observation of where it went, it moved about an inch. So I gave it five more little clicks, it moved another inch, and two or three more clicks, and I was dead center. 
I shot a king, talk, talk about a card, a playing card. I aimed at his throat, put one bullet in the throat. The next one I aimed at the mouth, put one bullet in the mouth. The next one aimed at the forehead on the king, right where the crown meets his forehead, and put one there. So I had three bullets exactly in a line, all three cut in the same hole. So how did you do that? Well, hand loads. All I had was just some 405 grain cast bullets, and I had some Starline brass, some Winchester primer. Say, so what kind of magic powder did you use? 12 grains of unique shotgun powder, pistol powder. I use it on everything. If I eat cereal, I'd put it on my cornflakes. You just cannot beat unique. And the thing is, you can buy some high dollar powder, some reloader number seven or some IMR 3031, or you can buy all kinds of different things, some Varget. But the problem is all those loads call for 40 and 50 grains of powder and powders $50 for a one pound drum of powder. You got 7,000 grains. So if your load calls for 70 grains of powder, you're only gonna make 100 bullets for 50 bucks. And with mine, I can get by with 10 grains. 10 grains divided into 70, I can make 700 bullets for 50 bucks. So the math is pretty easy. I choose the powder that will make that bullet move and it will do it the cheapest, and it'll do, be very consistent. A lot of old timers have used it through the years. I will give you one warning before we sign off today, and that is if you use a very small dose of unique powder, don't feel like you need to stuff no filler in the shell. That's just going to ring your barrel. Don't do that. But make sure, sure, that you do not double charge. If you're using 12 grains, and that's what your, lo your load calls for, that shell and barrel are probably not going to tolerate 24 grains. It's going to blow something up. So what I do to prevent that is I pick up a shell, I put powder in it, I set it down. I do not talk. I do not have children in there. I don't drink. I don't have any dogs in there. I'm very careful. And then at the end, say, what's your backup program in case that doesn't work? I weigh every single live round with digital scales. And if I see one that's off by 10 grains, I know it's double charged. So it costs you 20 bucks to go to Franklin and buy you a set of really nice little digital scales. So uh, there's some of my targets right there. They're out in the yard getting around. No, those are not my targets. Those are my breakfast makers. Let's see, one of those. Oh, that's a brand new boy hen. He can make other pups, other chickens. And those beautiful girls right there, man, they are laying the eggs. We got one girl out there. She lays some metal colored. I'm talking about pewter metal. Looks just like a Ruger barrel on their pistols and their rifles. They made that pewter color. And the uh, eggs look so hard, you, you don't even want to crack them on glass. They just look like they're made out of steel. So thank you for visiting us here at Whimsical Farm. Please give a little tap on that like and subscribe.